good morning everyone today we are going to discuss about neutral zone in complete engines so in the first part we already discussed about the definition of neutral zone the importance of neutral zone what are the factors controlling the recording of the neutral zone all those things so in this class we are going to discuss about the methods rather various methods of recording the neutral zone as well as the plane of occlusion so for recording the neutral zone uh, we have to follow the reversed sequence in danger construction that is the various steps we uh, we are following is that first we have to take the primary impression that is in the routine manner then we have to pour the cast from the primary impression then acrylic record base is constructed with retentive loops these loops are meant for retaining the modeling compound then we have to do the border molding on this record base so that it remains stable and retentive during all the procedures then the occlusal rims are made of modeling compound and it is attached to the record base uh, we have to record the neutral zone separately for upper and lower arches then the tentative vertical dimension and centric relation recording is done then only we have to take the final impression and final impression we are taking using closed mouth impression technique then after that we have to verify the vertical dimension and centric relation recording is done and it is finalized so these are the major steps in this uh, neutral zone recording technique so now we have to discuss about locating the neutral zone for the lower arch so first modeling compound is taken and it is softened in a temperature regulated water bath uh, the usual kneading is done and it is worked until it is uniformly soft then the impression compound the softened impression compound is rolled to a shape of the occlusal rim and it is secured to the record base which is already provided with retentive loops the impression compound must be thoroughly and uniformly softened for the tongue muscles and as well as cheek and lip muscles to mold the material to the neural zone it must be hard enough so that it will not flow and it should maintain its shape so it should not be uh, very viscous and it should not flow unevenly in this diagram we can see the fabrication of the record base and in the bottom diagram we can see the retentive loops these are the final trays with retentive loops in place so uh, describing about the procedure first the patient lips are lubricated with vaseline then the lower occlusal rim which has already been softened is inserted into the mouth then the patient is asked to do various various functional movements such as swallowing then pursuing the lips as in sucking etc proper swallowing action will mold the impression compound into the neutral zone so in this technique we have to use the different action of the lips cheeks as well as tongue it can be observed that the lingual surface of the impression compound rim will be will be shaped to the contour necessary to avoid the interference with the functional tongue movements so in in these diagrams we can see in the first diagram that is top left diagram we can see that the compound rim is inserted into the patient mouth and 
in the last diagram we can see the various functional movements which is done by the patient so this is the final molded compound ring the buccal view lingual view all the all the views now coming on to establishing the occlusal plane we have to place the occlusal ring back into the patient mouth with a sharp lead pencil mark the commissures of the lip and height of the lower lip at rest this is to establish the occlusal plane these three points are connected by a line on each side to a point one half to two third of the height of the retromolar pad that is the posterior reference point for lower occlusal rim then the excess impression compound is trimmed so that this line is established the relationship of the occlusal plane to the lateral borders of the tongue is observed the main criteria is that with the tongue at rest the height of the lower occlusal plane should be 1 to 2 mm below the greatest concavity of the lateral border of the tongue now we have to locate the neutral zone for the upper arch the procedure is almost the same like the modeling impression, impression the modeling compound is attached to the upper base to the shape of an occlusal ring and inserted into the patient mouth the same procedure is repeated until the compound is correctly molded by the lips tongue and cheek into the neutral zone the occlusal surface of the upper rim is approximately 2 to 3 mm longer than the upper lip line in this diagram we can see the various procedures of recording neutral zone for the upper arch in the first diagram that is top left we can see the modeling compound is placed into the upper occlusal rim with the retentive loops then it is inserted into the patient mouth this is the final occlusal rim for the upper arch now we can we have to record the secondary or final impression for the for recording this closed mouth impression technique is used rather than open mouth impression technique it is taken at an established vertical dimension after determining the neutral zone now the patient is asked to swallow and remain closed then after 30 seconds of this thing uh, open and move the jaw from side to side and pursue the lips as in sucking bring the upper lip down then close so these are the various functional movements these movements are repeated till the material is sufficiently molded and hard now we have to record the centric relation uh, centric relation recording is done as in the usual manner then after that we have to do the various lab procedures like beading and boxing and uh, then the models are poured in dental store one change in the neutral sound technique is that we have we uh, we have to record the external impression as well so to record the external impression uh, before that we have to do the teeth setting in the usual manner and after teeth setting the trial dentures are waxed up in conventional manner then the wax trial is done and occlusal adjustments are made now for making the external impressions the wax between the necks of the teeth and the periphery of the denture that is the wax between uh, our artificial teeth and the denture flange is removed and this space is filled with the zinc oxide visual impression material and same in the case of lower denture with both the dentures in position the patient is asked to close the mouth and do various functional movements as in previous case this is repeated several times until the zinc oxide visual impression material sets now the same procedure is repeated for the buccal as well as labial sides in this diagram in the top diagram we can see the zinc oxide visual impression paste between your artificial teeth and denture periphery that is for the lingual side this is the same thing 
we have to repeat for the labial as well as the buccal side. We can see that there is a concavity in the lingual flange. This is for the upper arch. Uh, we can see the tongue condor in the palatal surface of the upper arch. And same, we have to do for labial as well as buccal sides. Same thing for mandibular arch. So, to conclude, by duplicating this impression in the final denture, we have reproduced functionally contoured external surfaces as well of the denture that will aid in retention and stability of the denture. 